Hi, I'm Rhiannon from the Epsom Bakehouse and thanks for watching this bread making tip today. We'll be talking about why you should be shaping your bread dough before you let it rise for the second time to create the shape of your loaf, bun or whatever bread that you're baking. But before we get to that, I just wanted to let you know that if you're enjoying these bread making tips and you want to know more about baking great bread at home, you can sign up for my free email series of bread making tips. So when you're baking bread, there are various common steps that you're probably following. The first will be to mix up and knead your dough and then you'll probably shape it and put it into a bowl or other container and let it rise for the first time. And this is often called the bulk proof. So it's obviously just one big lump of dough and your dough is proving and you're letting it rise, letting flavour develop. And then you'll need to shape it for a second time um, into the shape of your dough. And then once it's risen, you'll need to knock it back and shape it for a second time um, before leaving it to rise in, say, your loaf tin or on a baking tray in whatever shape of loaf you're making. And I had a great question in one of my bread making classes the other day about why we actually need to do that. Um, why do we need to shape the dough? Could I not just take this dough out of the bowl and pop it straight into this loaf tin, even just pour it in, squidge it in, however you like, pop it in and leave it to rise. Why can't I do that? Obviously with a cake or something else, you could do that. And I thought that's such a great question. I wanted to film a little bread making tip and let you know why we're doing that second shaping. So the degree to which you shape your dough will depend on the type of bread you're baking. But I'm doing this for a fairly standard white dough. It's quite a firm dough and it will need shaping before we get on and bake it into a loaf. So first off, I'll get the dough out of the bowl. So beautifully risen dough and there's plenty of air in that, you can see it wobbling away. And I just wanted to show you up close what the bottom of that dough looks like now that I've scraped it out of the bowl. So if I just come a bit closer, you might be able to see that there are lots of little air pockets and it's like the dough's been cut open. So there's no real structure to that dough. And that is the whole point of shaping your dough for your loaf or bun, whatever you're making, before you let it rise for the second time. The idea is, is that within this dough, there are lots of gluten strands. And I'll put some links in the comments, but gluten is um, a protein that's like an elastic band. And it's stretchy, but it also can be pulled taut. And what you need to do when you're shaping your dough is create a skin, essentially, over the top of your dough of those elastic gluten strands and that will hold the structure of your dough in place in a final shape so that it rises and holds its shape whilst it bakes. Now if you're using a, a loaf tin like this to create a loaf of bread, um, it's a little bit forgiving because the size of the tin will contain your dough to some degree. But if you haven't um, done any shaping, so if I just popped that piece of dough with all those little holes exposed and no skin over the top, I've not stretched it taut. If I just popped that into my um, tin like that, you can imagine that as the yeast continue to rise the dough, they are producing gas, and, but that gas is just going to be escaping. There's nothing to stop the gas escaping out of that dough, out of all those little holes in the dough. And there's no structure, there's no skin on the dough um, that's um, tightly formed around the outside of your shape to stop the um, gas escaping and to allow your dough to rise. So giving the dough some structure by shaping it at this point will actually help you get a well-risen loaf at the end of your bake. Otherwise, all that gas that the yeast are diligently producing within your dough is just going to escape, not only whilst it's rising for this second time, but also during um, the baking process. And then you might find that you make a loaf that's flatter than you thought it was going to be. Um, the top might be all um, uneven. It won't be a... Uh, good even structure on your loaf and this is one of the reasons why your loaf might not rise as you expected it to. So you can see that during the um, shaping process I'll just start to shape this and I do have other videos that um, show you how to shape a loaf a bit more closely than I'm doing now. So I'll just quickly show you but you can see as I stretch the dough and work it round Suddenly, I've got a nice, smooth, tight top on the bottom. All the gluten strands have been firmly underneath. 
and I've made a shape. Obviously, I've made a round there. I've not made it for the loaf tin, but that would be the start of your shaping. And I've made a nice smooth top, and that's given structure. So it's almost like a balloon now, so the yeast can carry on producing gas, fill out that shape, and I'll create a loaf of bread rather than something that's a bit flat and maybe dense that hasn't risen well. So that was a few top tips on why we shape our bread dough. So it's to give structure to the shape of your finished loaf and to allow it to rise well um, on the second proof and to get you the nice well-risen loaf that you were expecting when you pull out your finished loaf from the oven. So if you've enjoyed that bread making tip and found it useful, do let me know in the comments. Or if you've got another bread making question, do let me know in the comments because I look forward to answering those. And also I mentioned at the start of the video that if you'd like to know more uh, about baking great bread at home and you want to get my free email series, then I'll pop a link in the comments for, to sign up to that. Um, so you'll get uh, five emails, one per day with a top bread making tip to help you start baking great bread at home. Otherwise, I hope that's been helpful and I look forward to speaking again soon about bread baking. Bye for now.